This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV. I'm at Display Week 2012. I'm joined by Jean Etienne Goudreau from Pol Polar Display, excuse me, Polar Screens. <laughs> See, I'm getting better at this. Uh, and he's actually got, you've got something incredible here. Uh, it's a glasses free display, but it's unique for a number of reasons. So, why don't we talk about it? Why is this display so incredible? Because it's the first public demonstration of a full resolution uh, auto stereoscopic uh, display. And uh, also it's using eye tracking, so there's no uh, dead zone or is a f f uh, you allow the user to have a f freedom of movement. But the most important thing is a full resolution per eyes auto stereoscopic display. Now we should talk about why that's an, that's an important statement. That is full resolution. Like usually with with auto stereoscopic displays, it's usually based by parallax barrier or lenticular. And I understand there's some trade-offs with these technologies. Maybe you could elaborate as to what they are. Yeah, the trade-off is generally the resolution. They cut the resolution by half or even more, so they allow some freedom for uh, tracking and uh, uh, not having uh, one sweet spot. Or they have multiple view also that cut the resolution even more by nine. Uh, in this case, we don't cut the resolution at all. We rebuild all the uh, the resolution of the uh, image, the 3D image, in each eyes. So you know, I, I, it's really incredible that you could get a full resolution on a glasses-free display, given some of the trade-offs with with parallax barrier and lenticular auto stereoscopic, which we've seen to date. Uh, can you explain how you're getting that full resolution output on this unit? By using an active barrier on the back of the LCD, we are able to alternate the uh, left and right pattern, so the eye, each eyes get the full resolution uh, portion of the re uh, resolution, followed by another portion, but in total is a full resolution, like the uh, shutter glasses is working with a left and right image, except in this case it's a left and right pattern image that it's uh, completed at the next uh, uh, sequence, and the system is working at 120 Hz, so there is no flicking, and you see a full resolution image per eyes. It strikes me, the technology strikes me as being similar, at least a similar idea to what you see in a movie theater. Like for example, Master Image 3D or Real D, where they have a polarizer in front of the projector alternating between the left and right view, but that's a glasses-based technology. So I gather in this case, you, it's a bit more complex, but you have something similar happening, but it's glasses free. Uh, am I getting it? Yes, and uh, instead of using basically the, uh, the, the, to take the example you have, instead of using uh, polarizer, uh, polarization, we use a parallel barrier to alternate between the, uh, the image. And instead of being a left and right image, it's a left and right pattern uh, in each image. Okay, and there's also some eye tracking involved with this too. Can you explain why, why the eye tracking is there and how it works? Yeah. The, uh, actually, the advantage that we have because we are able to get a full resolution uh, auto stereoscopic display, we no longer limit to a single pixel wide barrier like the other system because they just want to have half, uh, you, you get half of the resolution per eyes, but you don't want to have, a, uh, you, you want to have the, as small as possible. In my case, uh, because we have full resolution, we use very wide barrier, like for example, four or five pixel wide. And this gives me uh, 12 to 15 sub-pixel uh, where I alternate the left and the right pattern and when the person is moving uh, in, uh, uh, in front of the display and, uh, and is being tracked the information on the display uh, the alternate point is uh, moving as well and is tracking the person so it's the pattern on the display itself that doing the steering for the, the user or the tracking and that way uh, we are able to have a full uh, resolution with all of the freedom of movement so we're looking at the eye tracking now. Can can you f explain what's what's happening now? Yeah, the, uh, this is a commercial tracking system that uh, tracks the location. It's transferred the location to uh, my firmware on the display, and the display adjusts the uh, the pattern uh, location and the barrier width to uh, give you the best uh, stereoscopic uh, image at your uh, present location. So the sweet spot is at your uh, present location. Now I can move forward backward, left and right. I, what, what level of flexibility do I have with this? Uh, you have a one feet to six feet and this is a 55 degree angle camera and it's limited uh, left and right by the angle of the camera. Now, 
that's all the freedom that you have to move uh, to 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 place yourself for the stereoscopy. Now, what would happen if I were to tilt my head and and stand on my head? Yeah, the stem will automatically switch in 2D because you cannot have good stereoscopic if you are uh, not the uh, horizontal with the uh, the stereoscopic image. So we we program the system to uh, shut down the 3D and switch in 2D. The same thing if the tracking system is unable to track, like it just switched to to me right now. Uh, if I get outside the the range, you will the display will switch in 2D. So you will never get a bad 3D, and you, you will never get a, a lot of uh, crosstalk due to a misalignment. Uh, and now this is a case where it switched from one individual to another. Uh, I mean, you don't have to show it right now, but are there ways to switch? like to toggle which person in front of the monitor is getting the right 3D uh, image? Not, not at this point, maybe it's something that can be added, but at, at, at this point, it's uh, when you track a person, it will keep with that one. So if we want to uh, bring back the tracking to you, I just move out of this, the, the field and... The, oh, the there we go. Back to you, so now you can back to the interview and you have the tracking on, the, on yourself. Now, this is a prototype, I gather. Obviously, there's work continually being done on it. Are, can we expect to see a full release product anytime soon? Sometime in, uh, in 2013. So within the next year? Yes. Uh, and is this something that, that your company would release, or do you see it as something being licensed out to other display makers? It would be a license out to other display maker, like uh, we did for uh, previous technology that uh, we licensed. This previous technology, care, care to name it by name? Because I know our members would be familiar with it. Yes, it's the uh, uh, it's a variable polarization system that has been used by IZ3D uh, monitor and McNaughton uh, Perceiver monitor, or the also know uh, under the name of New Vision. So you have a long and established history when it comes to 3D display. Yes. Uh, so this is really something else that you've invented, something new, but this glass is free high resolution versus polarized or shutter glasses based. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you for, for, for joining us. Uh, it's great to see you. And th this is really something else. I, I look forward to seeing its next thank iteration. Thank you very much. I appreciate the interview. Excellent. Well, this is Neil Schneider for MTBS-TV at Display Week 2012. Thanks for watching.